This is George Allen in the March edition of Inside Sports Magazine. The caption is, don't call us, George, we'll call you. 900 days and 15 coaching jobs have passed since George Allen was fired after two preseason games as head coach of the Los Angeles Rams in August of 1978. Why doesn't Allen have a job? Well, Richard, I don't know whether I can answer that. Uh, that's not for me to say, but I think that uh, one of the things is I've always been a general manager, vice president, and I've had a lot of authority. Those jobs are very scarce. Uh, the other thing is I don't have to coach. Fortunately, I'm in a position where I can do what I want and wait for the right opportunity to come along. A lot of people say that you're a difficult man to get along with. Uh, what's your opinion on that? I suppose I am. I, I, I have been that uh, way, but I know what to do and how to do it and when to do it. I want things done a certain way. Uh, we work hard. We demand discipline. And as a result, you become controversial when you do that. I, I don't think it is because I think there's a certain way to do everything. And, uh, and that's the right way. And that's what I stress. Two and a half years ago, uh, there were only two preseason games in Los Angeles, and uh, that was it. How did you uh, part ways there? Well, uh, the owner of the ball club that time, Mr. Kerr Rosenblum, thought that uh, he wanted to make a coaching change, and so that was his loss. Allen has the fourth best win-loss coaching record in NFL history behind Vince Lombardi, John Madden, and Don Shula. Allen was head coach of the Rams in 1968, was fired after that season, then rehired when players revolted but was fired again in 1970. He then went to the Washington Redskins where he stayed until 1977. I think that a coach who has proven himself, a coach who has experienced, should have the authority to control his own destiny. Uh, coaching football is difficult under any circumstances, but if you can't control your own destiny and have control over what takes place on the field, what takes place on the field, that's the answer, then you can't be much of a coach, you're a puppet. What are your feelings about uh, college football in the United States? Have you ruled that out as a possibility? Uh, no, Richard. I've had a couple of offers uh, for college football. In fact, one included athletic director as well as coach. Uh, I coached in college for 10 years, but I don't think I want to uh, go back to college coaching. I really don't care for all that recruiting. Mm -hmm. What about the Canadian Football League? What do you know about it, and what are your feelings? Well, I think the Canadian Football League is a tremendous league. I, I think it has as much stability as, uh, as any sports conference. In fact, they've been in existence longer than the NFL. I think they have some great cities. I like the rules. I think the game in Canada has more imagination. It's a faster game than the NFL. The NFL games, last year I ran a clock on them, and the games were three hours and 30 minutes, three hours and 40 minutes. Uh, Canadian football games were over in a little over two hours. Uh, I think it's a fascinating game. I don't know whether I'll be involved in Canadian football or not. Uh, that's to be determined later. With your tremendous wealth of experience in coaching, uh, are you demanding a high price? Oh, not necessarily. I don't think it's high. If I got in, uh, involved in uh, most any football program, I'd have to have the authority. And uh, I never, when you say price, I never coach for money, Richard. All my career, the last thing I thought about was money. I coached because I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It was rewarding. I wanted to do something for the city, for the community, and uh, talk to my players that way. So we were more than just a, a football team. We were part of the area. Seven years with the Washington Redskins, what finally made you leave? I understand there was a contract in the works, uh, but you didn't sign it. Yes, the Redskins offered me a, uh, a new contract. Uh, in fact, to, it was really the best contract in the NFL. I turned it down because I had a stock option. I had the same offer that Lombardi had, and they took it out with the new television contract. And I thought that that was unfair because we had built the team up, increased the value, and now they took it out on the new five-year contract, so I wouldn't sign. You mentioned Lombardi. Uh, you're obviously a believer in what his philosophy was. Winning's not everything, it's the only thing. Well, I uh, admired Vince and uh, competed against him, and we made some trades, and. Uh, knew him very well. I, I think that he had uh, the dedication and the commitment and the know-how. Uh, and that's, that's what it takes. It isn't just dedication and commitment. You've got to have the know-how to uh, do a job, and he would have been successful in anything. You're 58 years old, I believe. Do you feel that uh, you're still young enough to get out there and yell at the players and uh, get the discipline and all that? Well, I tell you what, I, uh, before I got on the plane this morning, I went out and ran five miles. And I did uh, 101 setups and chinned myself three times. So I think I'm 
in better shape than some of these so-called young guys. Eleven of Allen's assistant coaches have become head coaches. Dick Vermeil, Jack Pardee, Ted Marshabroda, Marion Campbell, Howard Snellenberger, Pete McCulley, Charlie Winter, Mike McCormick, Jack Patera, Ray Malavese, and former Montreal Alouette coach Marv Levy, now at Kansas City. Uh, Marv was my special team coach and uh, has done a fine job uh, all through his career, and I think he's doing a good job with the Kansas City Chiefs. Did he ever talk to you about the CFL or give you any ideas about it? Well, I uh, got him the job in Montreal. I called up, uh, there was an opening, and uh, Marv wanted to be a head coach and recommended him, and he got the job. Uh, I haven't seen him a lot in recent years because I've been with CBS and traveling around, and, and once in a while we communicate by uh, letter. How are you enjoying your uh, television uh, analysis of football games? I enjoy it, Richard. It's a little bit difficult when I see somebody do something on the field, uh, strategy-wise, tactical, maneuvers that I know are incorrect. It's hard to uh, sit up there and not have any control over what's going down in the field. Anything uh, we can look forward to is seeing you, uh, say, outside of CBS? Well, Richard, I, I think I'll be with CBS. Uh, I have a couple other offers that I'm considering, and maybe I'll make a decision within a month. Maybe I can just ask you, uh, over the many years involved in the NFL, what was your personal highlight? What do you look back on as uh, the biggest memory? Well, that's a hard question to ask you. There's a, there's a lot of them. I think the, the big thing was going to the Redskins in 1971 after the race riots and winning our first five games, three on the road, beating Dallas in Dallas 20 to 16 and coming back, and there were 18,000 people at the airport to, to greet the team. The big thing, as I mentioned earlier, that brought the community together, black and white, rich and poor, Republicans and Democrats. They all came together and we had seven years of standing ovations at RFK Stadium. Are you keeping yourself busy? There was an article recently in Inside Sports saying that uh, sometimes it's tough to stay mentally sharp when you're not doing what you love to do, and that's coach football. Well, I tell you, I'm so busy that I don't know how I would take time to take a job, to, to be employed. I, really, I'm too busy. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm leaving for Cabo San Lucas uh, to go marlin fishing with my wife and daughter. When I come back for, from there, I have to go to New York on an assignment, uh, a commercial deal. When I come back from there, I have an assignment in Chicago. So I'm plenty busy.